Welcome to a Legendarium special about the Wonder Chamber of Rudolf II. The Habsburgs, a family of aristocrats originating in modern Switzerland, ruled the Holy Roman Empire and then the Austrian Empire for 600 years. During that time, they gathered a vast collection of artwork. The dynasty kept and sometimes displayed them in what became known as the Kunst und Wunderkammer, literally meaning Chamber of Arts and Wonders. The first true Habsburg collector became Ferdinand I, who in 1537 issued an instruction that antiques, instruments, and artworks should be bought and brought to him. Seventeen years later, one of his chamberlains recorded that objects started coming in from Graz and were placed in the Kunstkammer. This became one of the first famed cabinets of curiosity. At a time when Europeans began exploring more and more of the world, monarchs wished to advance humanity's knowledge of the earth. It also served as a means for them to flaunt their wealth. In 1558, men first wrote of a Kunstkammer on the site of Vienna's Hofburg Palace. Rudolf II, the grandson of Ferdinand I, made the Kunstkammer world famous when he gathered the whole of his family's art collection at Prague's Hrodniki Castle. During his long reign, Rudolf II showed off his treasures to visiting diplomats and notables as a mark of favor. It should be noted that others did not see Rudolf's collection as a diversion from rulership, but part of it. After all, Renaissance monarchs knew that they lived in a time of great change, and they believed it their duty to share the culture and knowledge of the world with their subjects. Yet Rudolf II went far beyond the art collection of his ancestors. He brought in exotic animals, minerals, jewelry, and much more. So what sort of things could one have seen in this wonder chamber? First, you could have seen an oil container carved from a 2,680-carat Colombian emerald. Second, you could see a silver automaton of the goddess Diana riding a centaur and designed to move across the face of a table. Third, you could see a tankard made from a carved narwhal tusk decorated with 16 rubies and 36 diamonds. Finally, guests could see a silver writing box with ten compartments decorated with life-sized silver insects. Of course, at least one object came into being simply to see if it could be made, a saliera by Benvenuto Cellini. This golden cruet set, only 12 inches long, depicted the Roman sea god Neptune and an earth goddess seated naked together. A box for pepper is near her right hand, and a ship containing salt is in his left. This demonstrated how the spice trade, which spanned the world, transformed Europeans' understanding of their earth. Cellini's original patron told him that the design could not possibly be created, but in 1543 he found a Habsburg willing to put up the gold, and so they got the treasure. During the early 1600s, court painter Daniel Froschel recorded a great many animals coming into the Wonder Chamber. They included stuffed chameleons, crocodiles, fish, a bird of paradise, and many others. If a stuffed specimen could not be had, Rudolf II had the animal in question painted. In this way, one found images of unicorns, dragons, and mandrakes in his collection. Beside them, one found ornately set beozars, or intestinal stones taken from cows and thought to possess mystical powers, next to them. This shows the mix of scientific interest and mystical belief that characterized Rudolf's approach to collecting. In 1648, during the final days of the Thirty Years' War, Spanish troops plundered the Kunstkammer after seizing Prague. The plunder from Prague included a staggering 470 paintings, 69 bronze figures, several thousand coins, 179 ivory objects, 650 amber and coral objects, 600 crystal and agate vessels, 403 cultural treasures taken from the native nations of North and South America, and more than 300 mathematical instruments. 
Most of the cabinet passed to Queen Christina of Sweden. Yet one Habsburg, Franz Joseph II, would devote much of his reign to regaining his ancestor's treasure. In 1891, the emperor gathered what remained of the cabinet and completed the Kunsthistorische Museum. It includes items of historical value like the Aztec headdresses in a new museum of history. Outright curiosities like humorous drinking vessels and portraits of people with horrific disabilities went to Ambras Castle near Innsbruck. The remaining 8,000 pieces went to Kunstkammer, where they piled up on shelves with only natural light for viewing. It must have looked like a garage sale, albeit one awash with gold, diamonds, and rubies. However, Franz Joseph II also commissioned weird and wonderful Renaissance-style paintings of his Habsburg forebears. Charles V is depicted armless, just a bronze head on a suit of armor. Joseph I is represented by a 12-inch marble figure on a horse, crushing a vanquished fury beneath its hoofs. Ferdinand III is a life-size painted waxwork. He continues to show the guiding ethos of the Habsburg collection that they could have and buy anything. Yet in doing so, whether they knew it or not, they created the modern museum in which the knowledge of the world is available to everybody. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.